Big Sky Chance Tournament and to the NCAAs, could you please start off the press conference with your thoughts on tonight's game? Um, it's been a long road. Um, you know, Chris Cobb and I, the, the two guys that are still here that came in, we put the staff together. Slowly but surely, we just brought pieces in. And when we recruit, we we always tell these guys that it's a chessboard to us. Everybody's a little different. There's some similarities, but everybody's a little different. And when we put the pieces together, we'll have something special, but it's going to take some time. And I, I think what you saw this weekend was an example of that. We came from behind three straight days. Um, we fought through adversity. We believe in each other. We fought for each other. The next thing for us was to convince these guys that defense was championships because we recruited a ton of offensive players. Guys that put the ball in the basket and probably never been asked to shut anyone down. Today, you saw that. Um, you saw a group slow down, a very explosive offensive team that at one point in time last night was shooting 75% from the floor. So for us to hold them to 36% in the second half and outscore them by 28 points, that's defense. And so what you're looking at is the three leaders of a group that is 110% body in to our culture and our winning ways, which start with defense. Mike, you guys are down uh, by four, and then you string together 18 stops and 19 positions. Hard to believe. How are you guys able to do that? Um, it's kind of what Coach Chav was talking about earlier. We all bought in as a team. Everyone on the, um, who played today, the guys on the bench, the coaching staff, we all know that defense is where we hang our hat on. And I feel like we did a great job with that. First half, you know, they were making a lot of shots. We had to make adjustments. Um, and myself personally, I wasn't, I came out, I was really flat. Um, thankfully, my teammates were able to pick it up for me. And, you know, defense is contagious. They started getting stops, and I started getting back in my rhythm. And we were able to, like you said, get those 18 stops together. So it's a big time for us. Coach, you have 11 at the end of the first half. How much of the first half was maybe a little bit of a, a hangover from what happened last night? And then what was your message at halftime? Um, you know, I don't know if it was as much of a hangover. I think these guys are ready to go. I think the biggest thing for us, we were, we were a little tentative in a couple of rotations. Guys didn't want to leave shooters, and therefore we left a shooter open. And we were in scramble mode. You know, the way we defend the ball screens, we do leave people, and, and we have to fly, is what we call it. And, you know, we had some weird matchups. We had posts on guards, guards on posts, to basically defend listening. And eventually we found our way. And I think that when we put a mod on him, we, we didn't require as much help, although Fab and, and Bobby did do a good job as well. But I think we could put those two guys in areas where they were even better, and our help defense got better, and our off-ball rebounding got better. And, you know, Fab is our best communicator in the ball screen in, in terms of communicating to guys whether the screen is there or it's not. And, you know, as a veteran, Ahmad was, was handling that communication at a very high level. And so when they slipped out, we just played one-on-one, -on -one and Ahmad did a good job keeping out of paint. And then we've got Mr. Scrap here on the backside coming up with balls, rebounds, and steals, and things like that. But it's a unit, you know. And I think at the end of the day, we just we decided that we're just going to play man-to-man. -man. We're just going to play them straight up. We're going to guard them. We're going to stops. It's the only way to win. And we did that, and you know, we're sitting here in front of you right now. Mike, you hit that shot, about 30 seconds left to play, kind of dagger final nail on the counter. You looked over the sideline at JR. What's going through your mind at that moment? What does this feel like for you? Uh, well, you know, it's an emotional game. You know, we were down 11, like you said, so for us to just come out and just fight through adversity, you know, it was just real emotional. And JR, that's like my brother. He came all the way out here to watch, so. He always encourages me, so we just kind of shared a moment. But I just knew we were going dancing, so it was just kind of my emotions just got there, and I was just really excited about it. Maude, you're a pretty cool customer in general, but today you seem particularly locked in and, and uh, fired up at the very least. Is that I mean, obviously a championship game, but it seemed like you really kind of took some ownership of, of the attitude for yourself and then to your team as well today? Uh, yeah, you know, like, 
we just we don't we didn't want to play in the NIT, you know. Like first of all, we have a senior year who gives all to the program, so we want him to play the NCAA tournament. So for us to be down 11 and then just fight back, I just felt like it was gonna start with me, you know, and Mike were the ones that are pressuring the ball. So I just tried to take it in my own hands, you know, just make Bob him work and then bring that energy and then just start a run and then we were able to do that and then just let the emotions and physicality and all that take take care of itself. Have you been in this situation before playing Eastern Washington Championship? Do you have a chance to get in so many tournaments? So to cap this way in your senior year, what's this like for you? Uh, yeah, really special. I remember that uh, freshman year. You know, I thought I thought we had that game locked in as well. So like, I, I, I might have been a might have taken me a bit longer than all the other guys to you know for it to finally settle in because I I wasn't going to let that feeling creep in again where I was thinking we had it and snatched away at the end, but. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's the reason that uh, I came came to this, came to this program, came here to go to tournaments, and it's it's really special. We we put in so much work this year. Everyone has bought in from top to bottom, and uh, it's it's a great thing to be a part of this group. Um, I just remember last year, like we got this time last year when we got eliminated from the tournament. I was the only one left sitting in the locker room, and Trav came in. He's like, "Fab, I promise you, this time next year we're going to be cutting down nets. We're going to be going to the NCAA tournament." And so that's been that's been what we've what our focus all year is what we knew we wanted to do coming to these three days and uh, just the fact the way that everyone bought in and the fact and the the way that we played the game of basketball was it was a lot of fun to be a part of and it, it brought a lot of success. Coach, the streamers are falling down on your head. You've been a part of Montana basketball a long time. What was going through your mind? <laughs> it brought back some memories, you know. Um, it's been a hard year for me, you know, and, and emotionally going into the year, you know, you, I lose a very close friend who I played an NC2A tournament with, and we dedicated this season to him. And sometimes when you do that, you, you put a little pressure on yourself to be successful. Um, and, and so I wanted this for Delvin Anderson as much as I wanted it for anyone because I, I believe that what we call the tradition of Montana, he, he plays is as much of an important role in that as any player that's ever put on this jersey. And the heart that, and passion that he played with is, is what I search for in every young man that I, that I coach or I recruit and I try to pull it out of him. And so it's been a long journey. And, you know, I wanted it for Fab. Like we say, you know, you have a senior that's committed to this culture and everything that we do. You don't want to see guys like that move on without experiencing what they came here for. Um, and I had big shoes to fill when I got here. You know, every coach before me has had some success. And the only one that didn't go to the tournament in the tree is in the Hall of Fame. So, you know, there's a lot of expectation that come with this seat, and I love it, and, and, and I'm competing. But I knew that the day had to come that we had to accomplish something um, for me to arrive. And, I, and, and today, I feel that we, we've accomplished some of that. We still got work to do, though. Like when you are, when you have such high expectations when you are a marked team throughout the tenure. How difficult is it to finish it, and how are you guys able to do it? And then to finish it, what does that mean to you? Um, <clears throat> You can see uh, by the three games we just played, we came back in each one. So that just shows that everyone gave us their best shot. Everyone had a ton of respect for us. Um, and you know, that's just, you gotta accept that when being the, the number one seed, everyone's gonna give you what they have. Um, but it says a lot about this team to be able to come back from behind three straight days. Um, I think it's very impressive and it shows that we were there for a reason um, at the top of this conference. Um, and I feel like we learned a lot about ourselves during this tournament, we learned a lot about ourselves during this season. And I feel like we, you know, we, there's no better feeling to going into this tournament than what we're feeling right now. So I think we're very confident. Travis, uh, in the Big State Conference, the stated goal for each about every team is to win this tournament so that you can go to the next. But uh, for a lot of teams, it seems like just going there is what the point of the season is. This team seems like there's maybe a little bit more. How do you adjust to set a new goal for something that, that might be, you know, even more out there for you? For this well, it's, it's been one game at a time. Um, even when we started this tournament this week, we, we still only talked about one game. 
and then we get to the game, right? And, and so now Sunday, it's sit back, see who we play. But these guys were recruited to into the tournament and compete. We, we never talked about just getting to the tournament. And, and that's why in November, December, we play the teams we play, because we expect to play those teams in March. Now we've gotten there. And, you know, in 2015, we, we had a 12-hour trip to Texas A&M. I honestly believe that if we got there with fresh legs, we would have performed a lot better. You know, we found ourselves in a hole and fought ourselves back into the game, um, but ran out of gas. And so now I think with it being an NC2A tournament, it's an NIT, in terms of the way that travel and all that, we feel like you get a fair shake, but it all comes down to seeding, right? But I do think that we have the talent to perform and compete in the NC2A tournament. And uh, I look forward to the opportunity to see what these guys do. More questions? In the back? Uh, you know, Bogdan, um, there's not many you know, point guards in the big guy that can check him. Um, what was that challenge like for you? Um, well, a lot of people don't know, but I actually grew up playing on Bogdan's AAU team. We were on the same team, so I'm pretty familiar with his moves. You know, he's a he's a real tough cover, though, but I know he likes to go one way and spin back, so I was just trying to just make him go baseline because, like, our defense just we're built on baseline rotation, so I try to just get him going one way, and if he did come back, just try to just contest it to the best of my ability. You know, he's taller than me, and... Uh, he's longer, so I was just trying to use my speed to, you know, guard him. But I was trying to just make it tough for him. He still makes some tough shots, and he's a great player. Coach, players, uh, last tournament in Reno. Could you talk a little bit about the Reno tournament experience and then about next year going to Boise? Hospitality has been great. Um, I, I think there's a high level of convenience in, in terms of getting from hotel to gym and things like that. that there's less wear and tear on, on a group when you know, as you start getting up um, for games. Uh, as we move forward to Boise, um, I, I, I've experienced putting this into a tournament in Boise, so I know how Boise is accustomed to putting on tournaments. Um, and, and so there'll be big expectations for them. Uh, you know, in, in our conference is, is trying to grow with new leadership. And, and so I think each year we'll get stronger and we'll make adjustments and, and be successful in different ways. But I, I think, you know, I'm thankful for the hospitality that uh, Reno provided us. And we look forward to the future as well.